about an 18 foot box RPM extreme spelled with an X because it's cool with a K for the kids with a Z here at Haylet RV of Coldwater, Michigan. And although at first glance it, it looks pretty good, this one is actually uh, kind of suffering from a bit of a structural challenge. This brand of camper is not, never was the best built thing on the road. Some of that is showing, but I don't think I need to call it a handyman special. It's not fantastic, but guys, it's also uh, very inexpensive compared to a lot of the things you could look at out there. If what you're looking for is a small, lightweight little box that you can drag up to the sand dunes or you know haul a motorcycle or an ATV around uh, and just beat the dickens out of it without really having to care about it too much, well, you might be pretty happy here. If what you're looking for is something that's just flawless and beautiful and has never had any sort of negative history, then you may want to keep looking. And hitting it straight head on and, and, and blunt as a spoon like that that's what we do here at Halet RV because you folks work hard for your money and you deserve to know the honest truth of something or other. So what the heck is going on with this thing? That's the next natural question. And uh, I think if you want to trace something like this, you actually start from the bottom. And I don't even know how well it's showing up on camera, guys. This is the type of camper that if we were one of these shifty gypsy sales places, we could put a couple pretty, because it still takes a nice picture. It looks good in pictures and video. When you see it in person, if you know what you're looking for, that's what happens. And sharing our expertise with you, that's what we do here at Halet RV. So when you see it in person, I don't even know if it shows up on camera, the floor kind of looks like it does this a little bit. What's going on? Well, the walls are built out further on this wide body RV than the outriggers. So what's happening is it's called crowning. Instead of the floor being flat, the floor is slowly starting to go like this as the weight of the walls push down on it. Well, the weight of this wall over here has pushed down enough that the entire RV has kind of twisted a little bit out of square. And where you can really kind of see it is up here. You see how that there's a bend in that wall right there? It looks like a hockey stick. That ain't supposed to be there. Well. It was this way, as the story goes, when the most recent owner bought it. And so what he did to try to arrest it and reinforce it is he came over here on this inside wall and he bulked up and reinforced this doorway right here. You can see all these extra screws and things. He put some extra structure in that wall right there. He says it hasn't gotten any worse since. Um, another thing to note on this RV, the converter is currently not operational. So that's something that you want to keep in mind during your purchase process. Now, if those things are disqualifiers for you, I get it. Know that obviously we will shoot you straight here at Halet RV. And when, uh, you know, I would encourage you to review another RV that we offer here at our store and perhaps then something work. But again, guys, the thing is with this one, this is this little camper. You're not buying this because it's in the best perfect shape ever. You're buying this thing because it's uh, not dead and it's inexpensive. And you could probably get a couple years of real hard use out of this thing and then be done with it and get what you get out of it. That's that's kind of my impression of this camper. So moving forward, we are carpetless. We're easy cleaning. You got these dual fold down sofa benches that obviously fold up to get out of the way. Um, the uh, We'll come back to look at the bed area in just a minute here. Now, everything in this is simple, basic, not built to be flashy, not built to be expensive, not built to be the best thing out there. It was always built to be simple, less expensive for casual type use. Um, the uh, TV hookups here above the refrigerator area, I don't believe those were ever really used. Um, the uh, uh, You've got cross breeze windows that are currently covered up by each of these little folding sofa benches over here. And in case you're wondering, those are the wheel wells. On a wide body coach like this, the wheel wells uh, really protrude up into the body area. Um, the uh, kitchenette here, simple, but the, the camper's small. I don't know what more you really need out of it. It's actually got a decent amount of storage considering the size of the camper. It's it, In that regard, it's actually pretty good. Oh, what size is this? It's like a 4.2 or something like that cubic foot refrigerator freezer. There is a freezer pocket up in there. You do have a couple drawers down below. Again, that converter, 
you're going to want to plan on the fact that that needs to be replaced. And once again, that's one of those things that had we never said anything, we could have just put a new battery on this and it would have been good enough for you to get it hauled home and you never would have known the difference. But that's not the type of dealership we are. Simple, basic bathroom arrangement here because once again, this is made for more going out and doing. It's not made for living and bathing. Now, as we spin back around here, this is a very, actually, classic early toy hauler design dating back to when toy haulers were referred to as sport utility trailers. So again, we've got the fold-up benches over here, and then we have a manual push-up, drop-down uh, bed in the back. This is our primary sleeper right here. What you do is you pull down on the back first, and then pull down on the front first, and you reverse that order when you put it up. But what's nice is it also includes a ladder. So to give you a look here, we can uh, drop that down for you, and you can get an idea of you know what it's going to look like if you do crawl up into the bed area there. So overall, the flooring and stuff in here is not bad. It doesn't look like... Actually, the camper looks like it's been well-maintained. It just was never a great camper to begin with. So that's I guess that's the two cents on this one. And as long as I'm walking out the back, let's just keep this rolling. Let's keep on going here. The awning! <laughs> here's, here's another thing to talk about the awning because why not at this point let's just keep it going right keep the hits on coming there's something going on here i've never seen before the awning was a little bit sun cracked and somebody went through it with like sealant like non-sag sealant and sort of glued it back together a little bit i've never seen that done ever before i guess it's functional and again, considering that this is a camper that you probably don't want to sink a ton of repair money into, you probably, someone probably went, eh, good enough for me. Now again, it is wide body, so you do have the extra space there for the, uh, well, just for living space, but also loading space. And there's a small cargo tray on the tongue of the camper um, if you want to put a small portable generator, some extra batteries, a cooler, anything you want. Now, uh, if you look up top, you might notice a brand new refrigerator vent up there. Evidently, uh, and you can actually see a little bit of um, crinkled aluminum, they hit a low-hanging object. And if we take a look up top, you can see where they actually went through and did a pretty heavy-duty job of replacing a chunk of the rubberized roofing on this. So once again, the most recent owner did a decent job of trying to take care of it. You know, in terms of upkeep and maintenance... The campers actually had good upkeep and maintenance. Somebody went through and replaced the tires. These are most certainly not the standard factory tires because these are uh, uh, Goodyear Marathons on here. 15-inch um, radials, by the way. And I don't see any signs of irregular wear patterns or harsh weathering or anything like that there. So, I mean, that's super positive. And this, look at the skin, the decals. They're not peeled and flaking and fading or anything like that. So... It's been well-maintained. It was just uh, not the strongest structure to begin with. And that's never really going to change. Um, it may continue to wobble a little bit more over time. And that's where I don't know if this is an ideal camper for a first-timer. But as long as you understand what you're getting into here, and I, if, if you don't think we've been painfully honest at this point, I don't know what it takes. But... Um, I, I think it's okay. I'm not willing to call it a handyman special yet. It's definitely one that needs the proper owner, but it's not dead. It's not junk. It could be if you ignored it, but I think with just a little bit of care and, and uh, an active eye for maintenance, it'll be all right. And I think that's the most you're going to hope for this one is all right. Now, we, uh, we are not asking, we're asking like several thousands less than the suggested NADA book value because we understand its condition and what it is and what it is not. And hopefully after this video, you understand too. So with that, take care, stay safe, have fun, and happy camping everyone.